So let's jump into phase two of the demo. We're gonna work with products here. We'll look at an external list, some info path forms, and then we'll connect that list down to SharePoint Workspace. Okay, so we're looking at the product list here. So we've got some medical devices uh, that we're selling as products. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the, the structure of the list looks pretty similar to the customer list we we're looking at, but let's open an item to uh, edit it and take a look at the info path form. So with customers, we saw an auto-generated SharePoint foundation form. Here we've got a customized info path form. So we've updated the colors and the structure of the form a little bit. Uh, we could have optionally added some business logic and validation rules um, in order to present uh, some information and help users make the right decisions when they're creating or updating uh, external data. So here's our form. Um, we're gonna go and edit a value just to make sure that things are working properly. Let's, uh, the unit cost here looks like it's uh, a little bit off. It's much lower than that. So we'll update that value and we'll click on save. We'll do the same process here that we did for the customer list. We'll go all the way to the back end. We'll write that value um, using the BDC runtime and we'll present that back in the SharePoint list UI. Here we've up got the updated record. We see the unit cost has been adjusted to $104. So things are, are working fine in the browser. We've shown you the form. Let's go and connect it to SharePoint Workspace. So we went to the same tab in the browser and clicked on connect to Outlook for our customers list. Just a couple of options above that is the option to synchronize to SharePoint Workspace. So if we click on that, we see SharePoint Workspace uh, presents us with a dialog just asking us, do you want to connect just this list or do you want to select more than this? If you wanted to choose other lists or other views of this list, uh, we could do that as well. We'll just go ahead and accept the default options. And we see a dialog here which just walks us through the initialization process uh, for the list that we selected and lets us know how things are going. In a second, you're gonna see a, a dialog very similar to what we saw for the customers list around asking us whether we want to go ahead and install the solution, which contains information about the external content type and the data that we should be pulling into the rich client cache. So we'll go ahead and we see the list name here is product catalog, we'll click on install, and that installs just the basic information that we need in order to move forward. And so at this point we can click on open workspace and we see the navigation structure of our SharePoint site. A lot of these lists were hidden in the browser, but this is the full set of lists that exist on this site, as well as document libraries. And we see the product catalog, which is the list that we're in the process of pulling down. So we see the info path form, uh, the exact same form that we've been working with in the browser. So this is a preview for us to see the contents of each of the items as we go through and, and navigate through our list. We can also see the same structure of the view here. We have the same columns and the same uh, sort order that we did in the browser. And so the goal of SharePoint Workspace is really the premier offline client for working with SharePoint data. So just as we could do in SharePoint, we can select any of the column headers, we can sort, uh, we can filter, and we can even group the data. We can also do a quick uh, search on the list here in order to filter down the set of info that we're looking for by entering a search term. So let's go and open up that same product that we were working with in the browser, and let's go and adjust the model name of the product. So this model name is not consistent with the rest of our models here, so we'll go and adjust that from uh, AP11 to AP100. We'll save the change, and we'll see the updated value here in SharePoint Workspace. And we happen to be working online at this point, and so the change is gonna be sent directly to the backend system. Uh, same as the case in, in Outlook. If we happen to be working offline, it would be queued up, and we were, when we were next uh, connected, we'd be able to sync that to the backend system. So if we switch over to the backend and we look at our product table, we see uh, both the old unit cost and the old model. If we refresh that, we see the new unit cost, which we updated from the browser, and the new model information, which we updated from SPW. If we go back to the list in the browser, and we see the updated information here. You guys are really quiet this morning. Okay, so that's uh, the second scenario. So working with the existing list, looking at the info path forms in the browser, connecting that list to SharePoint Workspace, and working with those same forms within uh, SharePoint Workspace as a client.
So the final phase of the demo today is uh, switching gears a bit and working with document libraries and showing how we can add an external data column to those and how we can work with uh, a word template in order to add content controls to it and use those content controls to help us fill in information about this sales quote, information that's stored in our backend uh, ERP system. Okay, so here's a document library that we've got uh, on our site. It's called Sales Quotes, and it, it looks and feels like a regular document library. It's got all the standard columns, but it's got a couple of additional columns. We have two external data columns, the first one associated with customer and the second one associated with product. And so we can see a few existing sales quotes here that have information filled in for those fields. So in our case, we want to go and create a new instance of a sales quote. We do that by clicking on new document in the ribbon. And Word will fire up in the background here and show us what our uh, sales quote template looks like. And we'll just go ahead and close the document information panel at the top just so you can see more of the, the quote here. So looks like a, a pretty standard document template, but we've got a couple of content controls. We have information about the customer and we have information about the product down here. And so if we click on our customer field and we click on the pick icon to select a value, we see all of the customer data that uh, we had pulled down into Outlook. So because we had previously taken this down, it's available in our client, we could be doing this operation offline and just working locally with our data. Uh, if we're online, we can go in and fetch the most recent version of data. So I can go and see my full list of customers here. I can sort them. I can go and search for particular data. Let's go ahead and select Janet, which was the customer we were working with previously. And by selecting Janet, we see all of her information automatically filled in for us. So less effort on behalf of the, the salesperson filling out the quote, and we also ensure that we get the right version of the data. So we're not making mistakes. We've got sort of one version of the truth here. And then if we want to go ahead and select a product that Janet's interested in, um, we select something there. We're going to enter the quantity. She's interested in five units. We see the price is automatically filled in for us. And if we give her a discount of 10%, we just hit refresh in the subtotal column, refresh in the grand total. Things are calculated for us here. So at this point, we're going to go save it back up to that document library in SharePoint. So we'll give our file a name here. Click on Save, and if we close Word, if we go back to the document library, we're going to see the new document added here at the bottom, and we're going to see information about the customer, so Janet, the company she works for, and the product that she was interested in, automatically promoted from those content controls in the document up to columns in SharePoint. Pretty simple example, but this enables a lot of powerful scenarios. I can now go and hook workflow up to this document library that can read from the values in these columns and go and interact with, in a read-write fashion, data that lives in SharePoint or data that lives in external systems. Okay, so that, that wraps up the demo portion uh, here today. So you've seen uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of capabilities of ECS in the presentation side of things. And uh, we think these open up some exciting scenarios and provide some, uh, some great out-of-the-box functionality. You can certainly go above and beyond what we've shown you here today, but um, solves a lot of interesting problems uh, and helps you create solutions that interact with external data.